Minsk Offensive The Minsk Offensive was part of the second phase of the Belarusian Strategic Offensive of the Red Army in summer 1944, commonly known as Operation Bagration. The Red Army encircled the German Fourth Army in the city of Minsk. Hitler ordered the Fourth Army to hold fast, declaring the city to be fortified place and defended even if encircled. The Soviet Fifth Guards Tank Army attacked from the northeast, while the Second Guards Tank Corps moved in from the east, and the 65th Army advanced from the south. About 100,000 Axis soldiers from the 4th and 9th Armies were encircled, of whom some 40,000 were killed and most of the rest captured. The result was a complete victory for the Red Army, the liberation of Minsk, and the rapid destruction of much of the German Army Group Center. The role of the Third Belarusian Front in the first phase of Operation Bagration was essentially complete by June 28, when its cavalry mechanist units halted at the Berzina. The same day, with the initial objectives fulfilled, Stavka issued a new order, number 220,124. This ordered the front to force the Berzina from the march, and develop an offensive towards Minsk and Miladekno capturing the former in cooperation with the 2nd Belarusian Front and reaching the latter no later than July 8. The 5th Guards Tank Army, under General Pavel Rotmistrov was however criticized for its slowness in attaining its objectives and ordered to display greater decisiveness. German planning largely involved damage limitation. The immediate effects of the Vitebsk Orsha Offensive and Bobrusk Offensive made it clear that Soviet forces had the deep objective of the city of Minsk. Authorization was therefore given on June 26 to shift the 5th Panzer Division from Army Group South Ukraine to assist in the city's defense. By the time the operation had commenced, the entire 4th Army had been bypassed on both its northern and southern flanks. Despite this, it was ordered to hold fast. Its central corps, the XXXIX Panzer Corps, had largely disintegrated under Soviet air attack whilst attempting to reach the Berzina crossings having lost two corps commanders in as many days. The above units were under the overall command of Army Group Center. The offensive developed through three main phases, the breakthrough of the initial German defenses along the Berzina, the advance of the Soviet motorized exploitation forces, and finally the encirclement of the German 4th Army after the defensive positions were overrun. By June 26, OKH had finally realized that the developing Operation Bagration was the main Soviet offensive, and that Minsk was its objective. As a result, the 5th Panzer Division was brought back from Army Group South Ukraine, arriving in Minsk on June 27 with the unenviable job of attempting to halt the Soviet advance and preventing the complete collapse of Army Group Center. For the German forces, the military situation was dire, in the Army Group's northern sector, 3rd Panzer Army had crumbled, with the LIII Corps wiped out, the 6 Corps shattered, and the 9 Corps being pushed steadily west. In the south, 9th Army had lost all cohesion, its remaining troops being pounded by artillery and air bombardment. 4th Army's 3 Corps were now ordered to hold fast, despite being bypassed by Soviet forces on their flanks. Hitler declared Minsk a fester Platz and instructed the remnants of 9th Army to reinforce its defense. 5th Panzer, which was reorganized on June 28 into a combat group under the command of Dietrich von Sacken, took up positions near Barisov on the main road northeast of Minsk, along which elements of 4th Army were fleeing from the front. 5th Panzer's main tank regiments, which unlike many German armored units at the time were at full strength, were concentrated to the north, screening the rail lines being used for evacuation. The road itself was held by a rearguard of infantry while heavy tank battalion 505, equipped with Tiger Is, held the rail lines at Krupke to the east. There were few manpower reserves in the area from which a defense could be organized. Some further reinforcements were provided by Grupp von Gottberg, the rear area security units of the Durlwanger and Kaminsky brigades. The crossing points on the Berzina southwards were defended by several police and security detachments organized as Grupp on halt and elements of divisions from Muller's 12 Corps, which had fallen back on the town of Berzino. 5th Guards Tank Army was now bearing down on Minsk from the northeast, while the Soviet 2nd Guards Tank Corps approached from the east. The bulk of 5th Guards Tank Army, 
accompanied by the rifle divisions of 11th Guards Army, attacked straight down the Minsk Road, forcing the German infantry back into Borisov by June 29, a screen of Soviet troops was left on the road to prevent any more elements of 4th Army escaping into Minsk. 5th Panzer's engineers blew the bridges over the Berzina on June 30 in an attempt to deny the Soviet forces entry into Borisov. The overstretched main elements of Grupp von Sachsen now attempted to screen Minsk from the northwest, where the 5th Guards tank army threatened to sever the railway lines. The fall of the city seemed imminent, 65th Army was approaching from the southern route, the 5th Guards tank army was making progress from the north, and 2nd Guards tank corps had crossed the Berzina. In the meantime, the four divisions of XXXIX Panzer Corps had begun to pull back and make for the crossings at Berzino, south of Borisov, in an effort to escape the developing trap. A column of vehicles stretched back for many kilometers, under constant air attack, as the bridge was repeatedly damaged by bombing. The replacement corps commander, Lt. Gen. Otto Schoenmann, was himself killed on June 29, and the entire corps began to disintegrate. The elements of Army Group Center holding Minsk began to prepare for withdrawal on July 1, authorization finally being given on July 2. Von Sachsen and the 5th Panzer Division were ordered to fall back towards Miladechno in the northwest, von Gottberg, after stating the defenses of Minsk were collapsing, withdrew his units towards Lida. With substantial elements of 4th Army still east of the city attempting to withdraw, the 2nd Guards Tank Corps broke through the defenses of Minsk in the early hours of July 3, fighting erupted in the center of the city at dawn. By the next day, Minsk had been cleared of German rearguard units, while the 65th Army and 5th Guards Tank Army closed the encirclement to the west. The bulk of 4th Army, and much of the remnant of 9th Army, were now trapped. Over the next few days, 4th Army made several attempts to break out of the encirclement, led by those divisions still retaining a coherent organizational structure. The largest group of encircled forces comprised the divisions of 12 Corps, which remained relatively intact, along with those elements of XXVII Corps that had successfully retreated from Orsha and which were now trapped near Pekelin. The Corps commanders, Muller and Valkers, decided on July 5 that their forces should break out to the northwest and west respectively, Accompanied by the remnants of Martinex former XXXIX Panzer Corps, they were now as much as 100 km behind Soviet lines. The 25th Panzer Grenadier Division acted as the spearhead for the breakout at midnight on July 5, but was scattered, with some elements passing north of Minsk to reach German positions. The 57th Infantry Division and Panzer Grenadier Division Feldernhalle linked up and attempted to bypass Minsk to the south, but were also dispersed while the same fate eventually befell the remainder of the 78th Sturm Division and most of the other divisional groupings. Some elements of the 14th Infantry Division under their commander, Lt. Gen. Flork, managed to link up with remnants of the 31st and 12th Infantry Divisions, Kampfgrupp Flork, after finding Minsk abandoned and burning, was eventually able to escape the pocket and reach the 12th Panzer Division's positions. Lt. Gen. Muller, who had been placed in command of all the encircled units of 4th Army, was captured on July 8 after a failed breakout by the 18th Panzer Grenadier Division. He immediately issued an order to all encircled troops to surrender, which was broadcast over loudspeakers by Soviet forces and dropped from Soviet aircraft in leaflet form. A large number of German unit commanders and soldiers chose to disregard the order, however, and continue escape attempts. Soviet forces were reporting actions against groups of encircled German soldiers several thousand strong until mid-July, and smaller groups until some time later. In total, around 100,000 troops from 4th and 9th armies were caught in the encirclement, of whom some 40,000 were killed, most of the remainder being captured. Partisans played an important role in locating and mopping up the encircled forces. Within the broader strategic framework of Operation Bagration, the Minsk offensive was a complete success. The 3rd and 2nd Belorussian fronts were subsequently committed to the 3rd pursuit phase of the strategic offensive in the Vilnius and Belostok offensives respectively. <laughs>